Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Backyard Barbecue Burger. Today, I'm gonna to be making a really simple one. I'm talking about the burger that you make at home in the backyard whenever you're having friends and family over. We're gonna have our own interesting twists on this, a really neat barbecue sauce and onion mixture, but for the most part, we're keeping it really simple. I just wanna show you how we do this at home. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is get the grill fired up. We're cooking on the Napoleon today, but we're gonna be using the charcoal insert. So this is one of my favorite features about the Napoleon Prestige. You've got this charcoal basket insert that fits right underneath the grates, so even though you're cooking on a gas grill, you can turn that gas off and cook 100% charcoal. Let's start by filling this grate up with some lump charcoal. So fill that basket about up to the top here. And then we're gonna light just the burners underneath the charcoal basket and just long enough to get the charcoal going. So while that charcoal heats up, I'm gonna grind up some brisket for our burgers today. Now I certainly don't do this for every backyard meal that we do. I'm perfectly happy to buy some 80-20 beef at the grocery store and if that's what you want to do go for it but since we've got some brisket on hand and a grinder i'm going to show you guys how i do this to grind for burgers so we're going to be using the grinding attachments on the anchor shroom mixer today but whatever you're using to grind your meat keep in mind that you want to keep the components just as cold as possible so these have just come out of the freezer and that's so that we don't melt any of the fat in the meat as we're breaking it down we're gonna put this guy together to get the die in there. We're going for a pretty small cut on here, that knife onto the small die. We want it fairly fine, not sausage texture. We want it broken all the way down. So what we have here is just shy of two pounds of brisket point meat. So this is where the burn ins come from. And that's the fattier portion. You can see all that fat that runs through. I've also got just a little bit of extra, about four ounces of trim of the fat from the brisket so we get a nice and fatty grind. This should end up around 75-25 here at the end. You can really see some of those fattier portions. The white is all the fat. We want to keep that solid, keep it together. And then the red is the meat. So that's what we talk about when we talk about that either 80-20 or 75-25. We're talking about the amount of meat to the amount of fat. So we wanna mix this together to make sure that we've got the fat and the meat distributed even, evenly. I'm not gonna work this too much with my hands though because I don't want that fat to melt. Now we're gonna portion out our brisket burgers into one third pound patties. So it should be just over five ounces on each one of these. And while everything's still cold, I'm just gonna quickly roll these up into balls and then work them out into patties. And that's typically how I like to work it. And I'll work it around the edges a bit Kind of put that indentation in the center because we know that it's going to puff up in the center a bit while it's cooking. But that's all the more working I want to do to it. I don't want to touch it much more than that. I'm gonna throw these back into the fridge while we chop up our onions and check on the temperature of the charcoal. You can see the charcoal's really well lit, so we can go ahead and turn these burners off at this point. We don't need any more gas. We're gonna close that up and let them continue to cook down. So the charcoal is crazy hot right now. I'm gonna leave the door open for just a little bit because if we put these burgers on anytime soon, they're just gonna go up in flames. So we want that charcoal to just cook down just a little bit, chill out just a little bit so we can get a little bit gentler cook. It's still gonna be hot and fast for sure, but in the meantime, we can go prep our onion for our onion and barbecue sauce. So essentially what we're doing here is we're going to make caramelized onions, but we're gonna cook them down in a bit of barbecue sauce in the end as well, so that we really get some nice sweetness and caramelization. You can take the tops and bottoms off of this, the outside layer, discard of all of that, and then we're gonna slice these nice and thin. We want these onions almost melted down in the end and it's easiest if we just go super thin to start with. 
my knife is dull. So I'm essentially just going north-south on this cut. Instead of doing rings, I'm following the lines that already exist in the onion. So even just one onion yields quite a bit, as you can see. That's why we're going to use the nice big 12-inch cast iron skillet. Once this is cooked down, though, it's going to be way reduced. But since we're going to cook these down really gently, we can go ahead and just throw them into the cold skillet right now. So we're going to start out over medium heat here on the side burner of the Napoleon. We want to get just a little bit of oil in there to coat these onions. We're going to use the extra virgin olive oil. One of the new oils that we're carrying at ATBBQ.com. I've been enjoying working with it. And then just a touch of salt would help to start breaking these onions down. So we'll put some hickory smoked salt in there as well. Not a lot. All right, nice and easy now. We're just going to let them cook slowly. And once they've really start to caramelize, we're going to add our barbecue sauce. All right, we're going to get these burgers seasoned up at this point because the charcoal is ready for us. We're seasoning these today with the Our Butts Are Smoking Our Beef Rub. Just a great, straightforward beef, beef rub. Something I'd put on brisket means it's something I'd put on a burger. So we're going directly over the coals now. This is a unique situation. See, I'd tell you if you're cooking on a pellet grill or even your charcoal grill at home, maybe you're looking for a temperature of like 425, 450, 500, but we're so close to the coals that it's hard to give you an exact number. You want something that's hot enough to give you some color, and when you flip it, you want some more color before it's fully done. So typically, that's in like that 450 range. Now, before I forget, we'll go ahead and dust the top as well with that Our Butts Are Smoking Our Beef Rub. Now, moving back to our onions, we're getting some color on there. We need to bring the heat down just a little bit so we don't get any scorching. And they're getting softened up. So this is kind of what we're going for. We need a little bit more of the breakdown to happen before we add our barbecue sauce, though. We're getting some good color on the bottom side of these burgers, so we're flipping these over now. Getting some flare-ups from that charcoal, that hot fat dripping into the charcoal now. And pretty much immediately after we flip these over, we're going to add some cheese. Now we really see that fat just pouring out of there. We're going to be able to move these off to indirect to finish them. Onions are over low heat now. They've cooked down really nicely. We're going to add about three quarters of a cup of barbecue sauce now. So this is our Firebug Mild Grilling Sauce. And the reason I chose this sauce for this dish is because of the fruit that's in it. The berries that are in this sauce are going to work really well with the meatiness and the fattiness of the burger. And you can see immediately it just starts to reduce down and thicken up, even on the lowest setting. So we got this nice, thick Tillamook sharp cheddar on here. I was trying to decide if we should double up cheeses, because I like a white cheddar as well, but I think with this thick cheddar, we're just going to leave one slice on there. We're going to let these come up to temperature just a little bit more. I can tell you we're looking for about 155 on the internal. Come over here. Yeah. And I can smell that barbecue sauce. I can smell the berries coming out of it. These onions are done. We're going to turn this off. Toasting off some potato buns now for our burgers. A couple that have already been on there for a minute. We're, starting to, we're just looking for a little texture. There's no butter or anything on these. We just want a little bit of crunch. We're getting there. All right, we're pulling our burgers. Some of these have come up to 155, 160. Some of them are a bit lower in the 140s even. And I feel comfortable doing that 
just knowing that we ground our own brisket. There's less risk of any sort of contamination, much like with a steak. Now the great thing about a backyard burger is you can make it however you want. I mean, typically we have a bunch of condiments set out, a bunch of toppings, whatever you want on there, you put it on yourself, right? So I'm just gonna show you how I like it today. You guys do it however you like at home. I'm gonna start with a little bit of mayo on the bottom bun. On top of the mayo, we're gonna go with a little bit of butter lettuce. I love this lettuce for burgers. Just got that crunch back here in the back end, but super soft and velvety at the other end. Kind of get the best of both worlds here. And then on top of that, we're gonna go with some heirloom tomato. This stuff just can't wait to be eaten. It's ready to go. Next, we've got our burgers. So the third pound ground brisket burger topped with that sharp cheddar. And then we're gonna start to make some magic happen with the barbecue caramelized onions. And this is where I put the barbecue in our backyard barbecue burger. See, I love onion on a burger. Not everyone wants it raw though. Most people will probably eat it if it's caramelized and cooked down in barbecue sauce. And that's it. We top it off with the rest of that potato bun. Potato bun's a solid bun if you're gonna go for just like your typical burger bun. I love a potato bun. Boom. Looks pretty good. We've got some nice juiciness going on that burger. Seeping right out on top of the tomato. Mm-hmm. I got onions and barbecue sauce right off the bat, followed shortly by the juiciness of this brisket burger. Great amount of fat in that brisket burger, and it carries the flavor. Flat, fat always does that. It carries whatever flavors you're working with. Sharp cheddar is a nice way to cut the sweetness of the onions, and then you add a little fresh crunch with some lettuce and tomato. It's all about balance. We say that all the time, but it's true. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed that recipe, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.